throughout these five Wednesday evenings of Lent, we have been blessed to hear how God is working in the lives of other members of our congregations to inspire and encourage us in faith. Today we will be hearing from Angela Karp. Angela is our congregation's vice president, and she has been a member of faith for about 30 years. And so now we'll invite Angela to come up and tell us more about herself and what God is doing. Thank you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs 3, 5. This is a verse that is on the wall at my house, and it has been my go-to verse for many years. In my nearly six decades of life, I have learned many things about God, but there are three things that I think sum up what I would share with anyone who asks me about my faith. Number one, we only see what is going on in our life right now, right here. But God knows our whole future. Psalm 139 tells us that God knows what each day of our life will look like before it even happens. Number two, God prepares us for what God has prepared for us in our life. Ecclesiastes tells us there is a time for everything. And number three, God is omnipresent, which means there is nowhere that God is not. The Bible also tells us that God is love. Now, I'm not a mathematician, nor do I know about theories, but I put those two thoughts together, and I come up with God's love is everywhere. Sometimes we really need to listen with our hearts and our minds to see what God has prepared and to see his love. Our family went through a rough nearly 10 years, and tonight I'm going to share my perspective and my faith and how it grew. And I also pray that the Holy Spirit will use my words tonight to work through other hearts and minds. I was born into a Lutheran family. I lived in Rosemount, Minnesota, and we attended St. John's Lutheran Church. My earliest memories are in the fellowship hall. I remember many potluck dinners, table after table of hot dishes, jello, and bars, and singing, Be Present at Our Table, Lord. When I was in fifth grade, we moved to New Hope, Minnesota, and joined House of Hope Lutheran. This church provided many years of memories as well youth group, Easter Sunday egg bake, confirmation, teaching Sunday school, and where I married my husband in 1985. Tom and I will celebrate our 37th wedding anniversary this year. We have three children, currently 27, 29, and 31. All three have been very blessed in the gifts they have been given by God. Tom and I were married at age 22, just out of college and we joined Faith Lutheran at some point between our second and third child. In the late 1990s, I remember being in our front yard with the kids. I can't remember if I had just heard about another family's trials, but I remember thinking, how do families get through really bad things? We have been so blessed with our marriage, our jobs, our healthy children, so many great friends in our community. Do we have such challenges in life? Or do we get through trials because of our faith, our family, and our friends? I remember a small voice telling me to remember faith, family, and friends as if I was being prepared. I believe this was the first time God whispered to me directly. My faith journey to this point had been a very easy path, very little sorrow or pain, Nothing too challenging in life, and yet, looking back, it was a very solid base on which God intended to build. In June of 2002, Andrew, our youngest, was seven. He had just finished first grade and wasn't feeling well. I took him to the pediatrician, expecting he had a virus. They sent me directly from the clinic to Children's Hospital in Minneapolis, 
the pediatrician had found a mass in his belly. Andrew was diagnosed with stage four neuroblastoma. We had never even heard of that type of cancer. There was a mass, the cancer was in his bones and his bone marrow. He had a 30% chance of survival. I remember a lot of tears but I also remember telling the nurse and the doctor that someone had to be in that 30%. And we battled that monster for several years. Many rounds of chemo, surgery, a stem cell transplant, and 12 trips to Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York for a treatment not yet standard at Children's. Our faith, family, friends, and community held us up. The prayers were coming from all over the world, literally. God's love completely encircled us. I still cry when I think of how my son suffered as a small boy, but he healed. He graduated high school with honors after being a three-sport athlete and went on to college and is now a civil engineer. His health is a gift from God. Neuroblastoma has a very high frequency of return. After he got his first no evidence of disease result, I heard God's whisper again, it won't be back, but there will be side effects. Reoccurrence has never been a concern in my heart. God had let me know we were done with Andrew's cancer. When we were at Children's Hospital, the chaplain gave me a Bible called the Encouragement Bible. I began a regular morning devotion in 2002. This time in God's word and prayer has become as common to my morning as brushing my teeth. These regular connections with God brought me closer and more aware of God in my day-to-day -day life. It was early in 2007 that I felt I needed to pray that evil would stay away from my daughter. Again, it was God whispering and preparing me. In May of 2007, Emily was diagnosed with anorexia. She was 15. We caught it fairly early. She would not need to be treated inpatient, but would require an aggressive outpatient program. This was a new challenge in our family and so very different. We told the world about Andrew's cancer and asked for prayers and were helped by so many, but anorexia was different. It felt shameful. Emily did not want us to tell people. There are times when evil comes into the dark corners of our lives, and we don't want to share. But Jesus knows. He felt the shame we feel when he was on the cross. There were no extra prayers and no extra help, but Jesus' love was there. Emily worked hard and recovered, helped by her brothers and her dad and her mom. Within a year, she was released from the treatment program and has been able to walk away from that evil. God's love again encircled our family. Now, families have all sorts of interactions and relationships, and sometimes relationships are very messy. The time in our family when we were battling Andrew's cancer intensified some of the negative interactions. Nick, our oldest, was just becoming a teenager when Andrew was diagnosed. That is a difficult time for kids anyway, but the strain on our family at that same time made things tougher for Nick, and especially the father and son relationship. For the most part, Nick was a great kid all through high school, but the tension between father and son continued to build. And I knew, I heard, God, I heard God's whisper again, there was a storm coming. Several things transpired, and there was much hurt and anger, and Tom told Nick he could not be in our home. This was the day that my family fell apart. The God-ordained father-son relationship was broken, and the tension in our home was incredible. I wanted to honor Tom's decision, but I wanted Nick home. Our family was broken, and I wondered if this was another side effect God told me would come. Our family needed prayers. I had seen how powerful they were with our youngest, and we needed them again. And so I prayed, and this time I was not going to pray alone. I wrote a morning prayer, 
and an evening prayer of healing and reconciliation for our family, and I sent it out to many family and friends, and I asked for an entire month of intense prayer. We needed to get Satan out. That was October. Christmas Eve of that year was one of the best ever. Tom invited Nick to come back home. He called him and asked him to come for breakfast. It was so simple, and it was how God had us start over. That day, my devotion was from Zechariah 4.10. Do not despise this small beginning. God's love was at our breakfast table. Today, the father and son relationship is wonderful. It is full of good times, respect, and most importantly, love. I understand now that God knew their relationship had to break to be better. God makes all things new. Healing takes time, and our family was recovering well. Then in May of 2010, I had to have a few medical tests. The devotion I read on May 14 was about God-appointed storms. I was not surprised when I was diagnosed with colon cancer on May 18th. Once again, God had whispered to me and prepared me. While this was scary, I wanted to be strong for my family. I knew that God was in control. I reminded them of the struggles our family had faced and how God got us through each trial. And I told my family we would get through this too. I know we all had visions of how difficult things were with Andrew's cancer. However, I was very fortunate that my cancer was found early and treatment was only surgery. It was at this point that I decided it made no sense to ask God why. A much better question was, what do you want me to learn this time? There's a nature preserve and a beautiful pond on the grounds where I work. And before COVID, I walked around this pond several times a week. These walks were nourishment to my soul. I enjoyed the fresh air and sun and the beauty of nature. While I walked, I often talked to God and I tried to listen to God. I don't remember the first time God whispered to me the idea that I should go to seminary. It seemed quite crazy, and it made me smile. I love worship and sharing about God's love. Well, a number of amazing things fell into place, and the next thing I know, I'm taking online seminary classes. I was still working full-time as well. This was a lot of work, and about three years into this, I started wondering if this was where I was supposed to be. Looking back, I think God was preparing me again. I began what is called a clinical pastoral experience, which requires even more time. I would need to to be on call and able to leave work during the day. I hit a wall. I, I wasn't able to give what was needed to the CPE program, nor was I giving enough time at work, nor was I giving enough time at home. I was confused and unsure of what I should do. I met with my seminary mentors, and together we decided that maybe seminary wasn't where God wanted me at that time. A huge weight was lifted, but I was also disappointed, and I wondered if I was somehow letting God down. On my way home that afternoon, I passed by a big church, and their lit lit sign out front said, and I'm not kidding, it said, Just wait, God is working. Wow, this time he gave it to me in writing. (laughs) I also had a devotion that week, Lamentations 3.22, which says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. I had been in a place where I was being consumed. The path to becoming a pastor was too much for me right then, And God's love and compassion took the burden from me. Later that fall, a friend of our son and his fiancée asked if I would officiate for their wedding. I have known this young man since he was in elementary school, and our families are close friends. This was quite an honor and very exciting. I would be able to share God's word, marriage advice, and motherly words of wisdom. I have officiated a handful of weddings now. 
And maybe this was part of God's plan. I love to share with these young couples that life is very messy. It's going to throw you things, maybe very scary things, that you didn't expect. Marriage is wonderful, but sometimes it's hard. But if you include God, you can get through anything. And most importantly, in a world where God is often put on the back burner, I tell these young people that God loves them very much and wants to be part of their lives each and every day. Looking back, I can clearly see where God knew what was ahead for me. I see how he prepared my heart and my mind and how he always kept me surrounded by his love. All of the trials of my life have increased my faith. I don't know exactly the path that I am on right now, but I try to listen, and more than anything, I trust God with all my heart. Thank you.